Hopefully you saw our other video describing the highlights of the Good Agricultural Practices, or GAP, certified harvesting operation at the UK Horticulture Research Farm. Let's take a look at what happens next. Once we harvest, we want to safely pack and cool our produce as quickly as possible. Packing boxes in the field considerably reduces the amount of handling that the product receives, and it expedites the process once the crew returns to the packing house. Since this buyer doesn't require pre-washed product for this order, we can skip washing and go right from the field to the fridge. The crew unloads the harvest into the cooler where it will be kept until pickup. Notice the sanitized plastic pallets. They keep the food away from any potential contamination from floor contact. Even though this order doesn't require it, some produce will require washing and house packing. The last step before delivery is attaching labels. Labeling is an important component of traceability and preparing for a potential recall. I tried to keep this simple, and uh, what I've done is I just say what we harvested, this is kale. I have the date, year, month, day. So this was this is an old label from us, 2015, September 23rd. And uh, then the last two numbers are the field where it came from. So this came out of field 38. I can take this information put in our harvest log, find out the beds we harvested from, find out who was harvesting on that day um, in case you know something spoils, maybe we find out, oh, some person had some something bad on their clothing or something. We can then trace it forward and say, hey, where did this go? And uh, the, our uh, distributor can find out where it went and recall that for us. And I'm trying to bridge that gap between the grower um, and the food safety practices. And so for a lot of people, they hear food safety and there's a lot of technical information involved with that. Um, and that, that can be intimidating to some farmers. So I come from a farming background. I have been farming here at the University of Kentucky on our horticulture research farm. And so I bring my experience as a farmer um, to the table and able to share with the growers you know exactly what is involved with uh, food safety practices. How do you implement a food safety plan? Why is a food safety plan important? And then how they can prepare for a third party uh, gap audit. You know, right off the bat, when we started this gap plan, we needed to try to minimize uh, birds getting into the packing shed, rodents getting into the packing shed, these kinds of, uh, you know, uh, animal-based problems. And so we started, uh, you know, trying to finish the building, and that, that included putting in windows, we're working on putting in doors, uh, you know, finishing some of the framing carpentry, some of the exterior work, putting on battens in our board and batten construction, just ways to try to seal up the building the best that we can. This GAP-certified facility at the University of Kentucky Horticulture Research Farm affords growers in this state a unique opportunity. Trainings at the site include on-farm classroom presentations from a nationally recognized food safety expert, followed by a guided tour of the GAP certified produce operation we just saw. The focus is on the practical and simple steps that make food safer and that will help in passing a gap audit. So if you're already keeping, you know, you know, a significant amount of records in your in your production system, the gap isn't like a whole new set of records that you have to keep. There are things that you have to document that are gap specific, but it's not like, you know, an entirely new process. And so I guess one of the things I've learned in this gap process is that that twofold. One is that that I personally feel that the requirements for the gap all make sense and are all things that any farmer should be doing. You know, uh, we've see, all seen these food scares and these food contaminations in our country, and it's just bad marketing to get people sick. And so I think from an economic standpoint, it really makes sense to be GAP certified, but just from a public health standpoint, it's the right thing to do. And I guess the second point I want to make is what we have seen in our time of, of doing this this year, going through the GAP audit, is it's not like this crazy amount of government regulation. If you're keeping good records and you're doing things in a way where you're trying to be safe with your food, it's not a whole new set of principles that are just a burden for the farmer. With that said, there is the economic aspect of paying for the audit and all of that. But the actual practices that are involved, not only do they make sense, but they're the right things to be doing. And it's nice to see, like, you know, here's what the federal regulations are, you know, at each step of the process so that you know that you're doing things right. So it's kind of a standardization. And for us being certified organic for nine years now, we're required to keep a lot of the same records that, gap, that the GAP audit would look at. And so it's kind of been an overlap for us in 
strengthen a lot of the things that we do to be better farmers, more you know, environmentally sound, more economically viable, more socially responsible in terms of our food safety issues. So, uh, you know, we're really happy that we went through the gap process, and I don't think it's a, a you know a burden or shouldn't be a burden for for farmers. As food safety becomes more important, growers interested in accessing larger markets will need to think about gap certification. UK Extension, along with others in the state, are ready to help farmers make that leap. Be on the lookout for training announcements, publications, and more videos like this.